one aim, one destiny. Higher, I them say more. I every pass it them a shout out more. I the dance floor, I them a ball out more. I the dance. Alice waiting in the apartment for the passport shows up in 10 days guess I'm gonna leave in the morning and go back to the border and hope I don't get caught in the last video I explained the, the choices pay a heavy fine in Bogota or take my luck and get tossed to the border and can't re-enter Colombia for five years or so I'm told I have no idea so I need to go back to the border. Why? To get an exit stamp from Ecuador and an entry stamp in Colombia and then I'm legal in both countries. But, as I explained before, there's road check after road check. And while now I have a passport, I have a passport that's really not saying I belong in Colombia. It's kind of saying the opposite. So stress levels rising again. So I go through the buses and I get to Cali and Popajan and Pasto and I arrive in Ipialis after I don't know 16, 17 hours maybe more and so I'm in Ipialis through booking.com yeah as a cheap plug if you use booking.com you'll get $15 and I'll get $15 and I think there's only nine more eligible for that. But I get a nice hotel right next to the terminal. Cost me nine bucks for the, for the night. Really comfy bed. So I can get a shower. I'm going to leave first thing in the morning. I get up. And at 5.30, I'm going out the door. Because I, it's 6 o'clock. It's dawn. And I want to I wanna be at the border. You can cross it while it's still dark. And they're opening at 6. So I've got this carry bag that just has a few days worth of clothes. It's got my little GoPro camera in it, my toothpaste and travel stuff. I decide to leave it in the room because I'm just going to go to the border and do the thing and come back. I'll be back probably in an hour and a half. So I go downstairs and the guy at the desk, he's actually sleeping behind the desk. If he wasn't snoring, I wouldn't have known it. So I got to have him let me out because he can block the doors. So I tell him that I'll be back and I'll check out, you know, after I get back. So I, I leave, jump in a taxi, I go to the border, as planned, I, I walk right across. I walk into the Ecuador immigration. They actually, they actually had opened a little early, which is fine. So there's no line and I just walk right in and I hand them my passport. And he says, okay, but where's your visa? Well, that was lost. It's a replacement passport. Okay, but what was your visa number? Now, here's a big tip I'm going to tell you. Every bit of ID you have, whether it's your U.S. driver's license, your passport, your entry stamps, your visas, take pictures, keep them in your phone. Really important. I had never, t I had all kinds of pictures of all kinds of things. I thought I had a picture of the visa. Well, I did. But it was just holding it, and it was so far away that when you got it big enough to read it, it was pixelated. You couldn't read it. And because I had taken that one, I just thought, well, I've got one, so I'm all set. Well, be sure. You never know what's going to happen. I needed it, and I didn't have it. So it's a Sunday. They said, well, they show me on the computer. They send me back to a supervisor, and he's, he's trying to bypass the computer, but he shows me without that visa number, he can't go any further on the computer. Therefore, he can't allow me to leave. I am not permitted now to leave Ecuador. Well, what do I do? I, so he tells me, you go to the immigration office right there in Tulcan, Tomorrow, when they open. 
So, I contact Booking.com and tell them to please make sure, they carry a lot of weight with these hotels, please make sure my bag is protected and like that because I, you never know what's going to happen to the thing. I've got the room, I've got the key. I didn't know what was going to happen. So, I trusted them to take care of it, fingers crossed. I then go into Toolcon, I get a hotel room there. Of course, I booked it on the way, $11 for the night, right next to the immigration office. Yeah, you'd think this was advertising for booking, but I, I use it like this a lot. So, well, not for this kind of problem, but I use it a lot. So I, uh, I stay the night, get up in the morning, too early, uh, immigration office isn't open for a while, but you know I, I, keep, I wasn't sleeping real well. So I'm walking around the block and walking around the block, and then I go to a coffee shop and I get a little coffee and I walk around the block some more. And finally, it's about time they open, so I go in. Huge line. So I'm waiting in line, waiting in line. It's the line actually started outside. It's a second floor, and you go up the stairs and around the stairs and up more stairs. And a line is going out there, so I start the line out on the sidewalk. So I'm going up and up and up. So I get near the top, and somebody sees me, and, and says, you're not Venezuelan, you're not a refugee. No, I'm not. Well, apparently everybody else in the line was. Come here. What do you need? We'll take care of you. Well, I tell my story. I lost my passport. I'm trying to get into Colombia. They tell me I need my visa number. He says, ah, it's okay, okay. Show me what you got. So he shows me. He gives me a, a paper telling me that I need a declaration of something, something, a requesting um, this information. He tells me to go across the street to a copy center. So I go across the street to the copy center. And they have that form right there on the computer, so they print it up and they certify it, whatever, it costs me a couple dollars. I go back over, he tells me to wait for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, he calls me up. He said, here's the paper. It's certified. It's got a stamp on it. It's got my cedula number. It's got my visa number. You can cross the border with this. So I jump in a taxi. And I head across to the immigration. I walk in. I show the document. The girl there didn't know what she was doing. So she says, you can. I said, well, yeah, I can. So she goes and gets, she asks somebody, and then she goes and gets somebody else. They figure it out, and they give me my exit stamp. Oh, thank God. So now I walk over to the Colombian side. Well, that was a piece of cake. Just walk right up, no problem, stamped it, I'm on my way. So now I'm on my way to, back to Manizales, but I'm going to stop in Pereira because in Pineda is a person who's handling the visa. And so I go back on the bus, I do all the things, I go through all the, not a single road check now that I've got actual documentation. I get to Pineda. Pineda bus terminal, four in the morning. Oh, look at the gringos stand out. And I go to the office, and I'll have a video on this, and apply for the visa and pay her the money. She takes my passport, sends it to Bogota, so I'm not going to see that for uh, two weeks, it, which was also turned out to be, I think, 10 days. But I finally got it back, and I have my visa, and then today I went down and got my cedula taken care of. So here I am, no longer an illegal alien. I do not recommend you walk that tight wire. It sucked. I went through five weeks of terror. It is not fun. And I couldn't do anything. I, I was afraid to even leave the apartment except for the immediate neighborhood because you never know. You never know. And the repercussions are serious. You know, in the U.S. you can be an illegal and, and I guess apparently nobody cares. And if you say anything about it, then you're some kind of hater and a racist. 
other countries are really tough about this kind of thing. It's draconian. Well, actually it's logical. And it makes perfect sense. And I don't blame them. It was me. But it was a tough situation. And it's over. And I'm home free. And I'm legal. And I'm now a legal resident of the United States and Ecuador and Colombia. I'll see you soon.